name is Blake, and I'm the child of two refugees. As most of you may know, refugees are people who have fled the country because of war, persecution, or poverty. My parents told me about their story, and to think that we get angry over such small things, like not getting a Wi-Fi connection, when these refugees had to prove that they would be safe and that enemy soldiers or pirates wouldn't kill them. If you, were, if you were in a refugee camp, cold and afraid, do you think you would be able to change people's lives? Your answer is probably no. But let me tell you something about Steve Jobs. I'm sure most of you know who he is, but you may not know that one of his parents was a refugee seeking a safer place to live. And that's why you have your Apple iPhone, tablet, or even a computer. So I personally think that refugees can change the world. Climate change and deforestation have a big effect on refugees too. Approximately three football fields of the Amazon rainforest are being cut away every minute, causing indigenous people to abandon their homes and flee to countries such as Brazil or Colombia, where they are then forced into refugee camps. And by the end of the century, the world's rainforest could get wiped out. How many refugees would there be then? Now I'm going to tell you about my parents' story. My parents were born in Vietnam, a poor country. My grandparents worked very hard each day to make ends meet, from farming to fishing. There was definitely no internet access. Children there were supposed to help from an early age as well, even though it's under 10. But that all changed with the Vietnam War. According to what my parents have told me, after the war, they feared for their lives and fell on a makeshift fishing boat to escape persecution and arrest by the North Vietnamese army. But having a seat on the small fishing boat did not come free. It was worth a king's ransom. My grandparents bought a spot on the boat with all their life savings. There were at least 50 people crammed on board like sardines under the cover of darkness. They didn't know where they were going or what their future would be. They only knew that anywhere was safer and better than here. Even after they made it onto the rickety boat and were far away from Vietnam shores, they were not out of danger yet. Thai pirates knew the Vietnamese were easy pickings along the escape route. It was the dead of night, my dad was only eight years old. Just as they thought they were safe, Thai pirates boarded the little fishing boat. Everyone had to try and hide their prized possessions as best they could. But the pirates were smart. They had small flintlocks and tied up everyone. They found what they were looking for and had their way. So by the end of this terrifying ordeal, the people on the small fishing boat were cast adrift and left to the mercy of the oceans. They had just been stripped of everything that could help them start a new future. But just as they were losing hope, the stricken fishing boat drifted into an oil rig. The oil rig crew noticed the refugees and rescued them. My dad's family, along with all the people on the boat, were transported to an island off the coast of Malaysia. They stayed there for a few years when my father learned English was awaiting to be processed by the UN ambassadors. One day, months after the interview, by stretching out some water on the island, my father heard his name called out along with the rest of his family. This meant that they had been accepted and could fly to Australia. My refugee parents had, li had fled Vietnam after the war with their families. They spent their childhood in Australia and met in university. They now work for Sage and JP Morgan in London, where my sister and I were born. Being a child of a refugee has told me that one could be stripped of everything, food, shelter, clean drinking water, friendship even, but they can't take away your hope. Thank you for listening, and remember, anyone can make a difference.